trying something new today. Something so new that it still has the sticky stuff on the screen. The whole first half of this video is going to be shot with the new GoPro Hero 10. I'm just on my way to meet Zeb from Ribble and I'm going to see if I can keep up on a road ride. cafe for two hours putting off riding but eventually we've got out lovely day it's warmed up now but he's so pro he's got to wear winter kit all the time it's part of the contract you sign that climb which we just descended yeah took everyone by surprise at the end of the tour of britain stage and there was like ineos riders coming out the back literally all the team cars were like on the um on the route yeah, elevation the profile it just didn't look that bad yeah, yeah, yeah. going up here Hard. Yeah, it's I don't know what the name of that climb is, but up into Burnett Field, if you're ever in the area, it's proper. Is that Busty Bank? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. That's the one where James attacked. Yes. I think that's the climb where James went on a mad one because he was like, well, I've got nothing to lose. I was fucking whack, yeah, whack that out and whack it. <laughs> and uh, well, for that, went over the top, and that was like final race selection. So, yeah, boy James Shaw. That's the bank. Yeah, that literally the whole race went from one group to like five. Low light test. So nice to ride with Zeb, good to catch up with the guys at the shop. We've actually never ridden together. He lived up here, then moved to London when I moved from London to here. Obviously he rides for Team Ribble and they're going to be back up here doing a race called the Beaumont Trophy next week. So our plan on the Sunday is to head out there on the gravel bikes, see if we can catch the race coming past and give them some support from the side of the road. So a bit of a low light test for the camera in the shop back there and under these trees. Apparently the performance is the best it's ever been on a GoPro for low light. It might not be that relevant to road cycling, but particularly mountain biking, when you're underneath the trees, you'll see in my footage a lot of the time, it's not very usable on the older cameras. I will head out on the mountain bike at some point with this on the chest mount to see how it performs compared. Uh, in the meantime, today's video, I'm shooting on all stock settings straight out of the box on this GoPro. So it's on linear lens setting, sort of 4K resolution. Hypersmooth is on, but not on boost. So it should look very stable. Sharpening is on medium and I'm shooting on a brand new color profile called natural. So I'll give you an example here of the raw footage and then switch back now to what it looks like with my color grading on it, where I've adjusted the colors very slightly to sort of fit in with the rest of my footage and the DSLR footage. This hill's getting very steep now. It's getting increasingly harder to talk to this camera. I'll talk to you in a bit at home. So I'm still shooting with the Hero 10 right now. All of the audio from today's video is just completely raw out of the camera, unedited in post-production from the microphones that are built into the GoPro. Usually I put these little fluffy things, which are basically just hair that you stick with one of these tiny little 3M stickers directly onto the camera. These make a huge difference to how the microphones perform in wind. But obviously I wanted to test this new camera without any modifications, just to show you what it would be like completely stock. I am gonna put these on for future videos because I know they make a massive difference, but this morning's footage, just raw. Sound all right? I'm no tech reviewer and that's not the sort of thing that I usually cover on my channel, but when it's something that's so relevant to cycling, which GoPros I think are probably the most popular camera out there, uh, I feel like it's worth going over some of the features. Now there's a bunch of different changes and upgrades from the Hero 9 in this camera, but the ones I'm most excited about are the processor and the touchscreen, which is two things that make a big difference to the functionality of the camera when you're actually out riding. Firstly, this touchscreen is well improved. It reacts so much quicker than the last one. So changing settings, especially when you're wearing gloves and stuff like that, is basically like using a phone. Second, the processor. Essentially, that engine that runs it is way faster. So if you want to change between video and photo or you want to play files back, that all happens a lot faster. Best thing about the processor from my testing this morning is how quickly you can turn the camera on and off. 
So if you have quick capture enabled, that's when the camera is completely off, but when you press the record button, it turns on and starts recording straight away. That now happens a lot quicker than on the GoPro Hero 9. So if you want to film something quickly, something interesting is happening, that whole booting up process I've noticed is much faster. So you're less likely to miss the interesting thing that's going on. Now, this is unedited footage. GoPro Hero 9 on the left, GoPro Hero 10 on the right, and identical settings except for the picture profile. So you might be able to see a difference in the colors, but you can get an idea of image clarity. Just step outside. Uh, see some different changing lighting conditions. How the cameras react. Nice blue sky, harsh light. And backlit. Back inside, see how quickly the uh, auto reacts. So what is the conclusion there? Both of the cameras look fantastic. The last four iterations of the GoPro camera have been amazing. It absolutely blows my mind that a camera of this size can have the features that it does. There is a reason why they're market leaders and every single time they release a new camera, it does get slightly better. The latest version follows that trend. There's definitely benefits to be had at a slightly higher price point than the cameras before, perhaps because of the changes of color profile and the massive new resolutions that they offer. It may be better utilized by someone who really understands the filmmaking process and can utilize those massive resolutions to crop into images and uh, do a lot more post-processing. The image itself, from my perspective, hasn't changed that much, especially if you're filming stuff, editing it on your phone and posting it straight on Instagram and it's just like a tiny little thing that people are looking at on a phone screen. If you want the absolute best on offer, the GoPro Hero 10 is the one to go for. And no matter what your level of filmmaking might be, the release of this camera is a positive thing because now the Hero 9 and the Hero 8 will inevitably come down in price. And all of these are fantastic and very powerful cameras. This is not a paid thing though, but they did send this to me for free to have a play with, and they also provided me with an affiliate link. So in the link down below in the description, I'll put it on the top line, uh, if you wanted to buy any of the GoPro cameras, it works for all of the stuff on their website, and if you purchase it through there, then I earn a little bit of commission, which helps me massively and this channel. There's also a link down below to my Patreon page where you can find my LUT if you want your videos to look like my videos. It works on both action cameras, there's a version for that, and DS. SLR style cameras as well, you just need to adjust the intensity. Thank you as always for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and let me know what you thought of the footage and the differences between them in the comment section down below. See you guys soon.